Okay, we are official. Up until this point, with our trinomials, right, or with our factoring, right? and we're talking in general about parabolas, parabolas like this, or parabolas like this, right? In general, um, <coughs> that's what we've been talking about. And we did the difference of two squares, not just trinomials, but also binomials. But we're, all ta we're always talking about parabolas, x squared, quadratics, right? Now, up to this point, though, I've never given you an equation. I've only given you an expression. What's the date? The 13th. Yeah, it's, it's negative 101. Yeah, I think it's the 13th. 14, 15. Yes, it's the 13th. And, and so by just by putting an equal sign in, it gives you permission to actually do something with it, right? Suddenly, before, when you're just factoring, you've just got an expression, you can factor it, but it doesn't really mean a lot. There's not much you can do with it. As soon as we put an equal sign, there's something you can do with it. It's actually useful, okay? And one of the most important things, that the most useful things you can do is find the zeros. And fortunately, one of my students came up here and found the zero, and I was so proud of him. It was like, or actually, them. You're welcome, Gary. There were two of them. I and wrote they it the both first time. found hey, the zero. You, I was really you impressed. Didn't write it correctly. That is it. not what I meant, though. I you wrote it in lime green. It's my favorite color, Gary. Okay. No, uh, no. That, that's how you find a zero, though. Okay. So. Number, and it say found it. Up to this point, I have given you. Guys. Up to this point, I've given you things like this um, x squared minus, or excuse me, plus 2x plus 1, right? And I can factor it. How would I factor it? Oh. Factors of X. C that add to B. Would it be oh. Oh. 1? Oh. Oh. One. Oh. One, times one. Oh. 1 times 1. So 1 is 1 times 1, right? <laughs> yeah. 1 plus 1. Would be X. Just like, uh, well, plus, plus 1 is 2. So it'd be one. x plus 1 plus x times plus x one. plus 1, right? And yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, oh, yeah. So now, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one le an extra thing here. I'm going to put a y equals. What? Y equals. Can we, oh, can yeah. Okay. Is it possible to turn this into a point slope formula? Because it's y equals, and then except. I mean slope intercept formula? Yeah, that. Yeah. Well, this is, we're talking, slope intercept is for a straight line, right? Mm -hmm. That's only straight lines. So we're talking about parabolas. We have the x squared for parabolas or quadratics, right? Therefore, it won't be slope intercept anymore. We're out of that. Slope intercept is only for straight lines. We're now moving into new territory with the parabolas, okay? Now, so it looks like the same thing, right? It's pretty much the same thing. We did the same process. There's only one thing. Up here, though, look at our instruction. It says, find the zeros. And now, I want you to think about it for a second. If this is my graph, where am I? If this is a graph, and let's just say I have a parabola. Okay, and I asked you to find the zeros. What that means? Where where is y zero? It is. It's, it's that point. It's on it's the, the line axis. up. The, the well, y this is my, line. This is my y axis. This is my line. x axis, right? Zero. I'm gonna redraw this. So it'd, it's be it'd be on the y axis. It'd be on the y axis. So where? Okay, so where is y zero? Right, right here, right? Right, 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 right there. Okay, is y zero here? No. Is y zero here? Yes, yes. Is y zero here? Yeah. Is y zero here? Yes. Is y zero here? Yes. Y zero here? Yes. yes. Okay, that's what they mean. Find x when y is zero. That's what finding the zeros mean. It means this. Find x when y equals zero. Now, that is very useful. <laughs> way more useful than you realize. Very, very useful. So when they say find the zeros, they're asking, what's another way you can word finding the zeros? You 
Anybody can, any, can anybody think about it? Find the x intercepts, right? Wouldn't you agree with me? The only thing is, with a straight line, there's only one y, one, one x intercept, right? It just crosses the x axis in one place. But with a parabola, it crosses in two different places. Very useful information. Very, very useful. And you'll understand more of that as we move forward. But the main thing right now is to understand that finding the zeros means find x when y is zero. So how would I do that here? How would I do that here? What would I have to do to the y? Um, yes. Make it zero, right? Just like you did when you were finding, when you remember when we're graphing slope, uh, not, um, standard form equations, yeah. straight lines, remember? You got 2x plus 4y is equal to 8. And to find the x-intercept, I make y zero, meaning 4 times 0 is 0, so I hover it up, because y is 0. Right? 2x equals 8, x equals 4. I found my x-intercept, x is 4, right? Yeah. So the same thing is true when I'm dealing with quadratics. To find my zeros, or finding my x when y is zero, I am actually finding the x-intercept. So I could write it this way as well. I could say find the zero. I could say find x when y equals zero. I could say find the x-intercept, which means, so really focus, guys. Finding the x-intercept means finding x when y is 0, right? You guys all get that, right? Okay. Yeah. Totally get that. There's one other thing, well, two other things that they could say. They could say find the roots. Find the roots. Notice the root is where it touches the ground, when it first enters the ground, right? That's the root. So that's another term. It's not used as often, but it is used. So you have to know that when they say find the roots, that means, oh, find the zeros. The last one is, we do have an equal sign, right? The last one is um, a little, little more um, subtle, because they could say this, solve for x. And that's weird, because you've got an x and a y. Right? But when they say solve and they're talking about quadratics, when they say find the solution, right, they're actually saying find the zeros. Okay? Find x when y is zero. So the on, when y is zero, you're on the x axis, anywhere on the x axis. Okay, so like uh, Mira said, I'm going to change the y to zero. So I'm going to, I'll just start over again. I'll say zero is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1. And I like my 0 on the right side, so I'm going to put my 0 equals 0 over there. And yeah, I'm going to, this one, I'm not going to erase it. I'm just going to proceed from here. Does that make sense? I like my 0 on the right. It's just my, my habit. It doesn't matter, though. Oh, well, I'm right? on the left. And then, yeah, you like it on the left. Well, so there, right? X plus 1 times x plus 1. Remember I told you factoring is really useful, right? Well, here, before I factored, there's nothing else I can do. Are you guys listening for sure? Okay. Before I factored, when I set it equal to 0, before I factored, there's absolutely nothing I can do. After factoring, I can actually solve the problem. Yes? I think I know what x is. What? Negative 1. That is correct. Because How negative do you get that? Uh, well, negative 1 plus 1 is 0, and when you multiply 0 times 0, you get 0. So I mean, you know. Right. Interesting. Interesting. So I have a question. Okay, that's brilliant, Gideon. That's brilliant. So I have a question. If I, if I wrote a, a thing here, let me just say a times if a times b equals 0, what do I know about a and b? They have they're to be opposite. They have to be opposite. Yeah, they're both zero. Okay, so let me start with one and first. One so then, 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 then. Oh wait, are you multiplying it? Yes. A okay, times no, B. then one oh, of yeah, them has to be zero. Wait a minute. So 
One of them or both of them have to be zero? One, one of, of them. Because it's Are you a sure? Yes. 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 Times a. But what if, you, what if you had two very, very tiny numbers and you multiply them together? No. You get a bigger number. No, yeah. yeah, then you'd still get. Not necessarily. Because well, let's say well, they're both fractions. Negative. What if they're both fractions? Mm, then one no, over, you'd still one get over two billion <laughs> times one over two billion. That's still small. not that zero. Be that, 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 be, that wouldn't be zero. It but would it's still be not that would be two over two billion, I think, right now. So maybe. it has to be at least one of them has to be zero. Is that right? You guys are agreeing with that? You just created a rule. That's a that is an algebraic rule that if a times b equals zero, then either a equals zero. Or how much space? Oh, I do. Or b equals zero. That is actually a rule, an algebraic rule, which you guys just discovered. You know, you guys could be in the academy for mathematical geniuses or something, right? Well, I'm pretty sure we didn't discover that in the course. You probably didn't. But yeah, pretty much it's everyone. Brilliant. Up it's a that. brilliant rule. Not really. So Not how sure. does that apply to this? Would you guys agree with me that in this case, in this case, this right here is my a. If a times b equals zero, this is my a. The x plus one is my a, right? You see that? It's this blob times this blob, which is my b. Wait, Gary, but they're both the same. Correct. Right. So soon you're going to see some that are different. But yeah, good point. So, but since they're both the same, yeah, well, let's, let's just say. So that means either a must equal zero, or b must equal zero. Now, when you're dealing with binomials, there's an extra step, which Gideon did. He said, well, what would x have to be for this to be zero? And he said negative one. That's right. Oh, you so, can just do the opposite. But the other thing you could do is you can do this. You could write x plus one equals zero. We know that that must equal zero, right? Um, either that one or that one, but since it's the same thing, they both have to equal zero, right? Because that's the only way you're going to get zero is if they're both zero in this case. So if I subtracted one, subtracted one using algebra, x is equal to negative one. Or, as Gideon did, he just said, well, what would x have to be for that to be zero? Wait, Gary, negative I have a question. One. Yes. Why not just use the opposite of that number? Because uh, a number times it or plus its opposite is zero. Very good question. And if it just is x plus something or x minus something, it works. If it's 2x plus something, then you have to do one extra step. You, I'll show you. I'll show you. So, so um, but we're not going to get into those yet, but that's okay. I'll show you anyway. I'm feeling um, smart. Can I erase today. this? Yay. Can I erase this? Yeah, yeah. All right. You always feel smart, Ben. I am. I still. All right. So let's do number two. Let's try another one. How about um, x? Whoops. Compliments. You look at x a lot. Why? Sometimes. Sometimes equals um, x squared I, I, actually, plus, actually, let me do minus, x squared minus 8x plus 15. All right, and I asked you to find, write that down in your notes. London, London, write that in your notes. Right. And I asked you to find the zeros, find the x-intercepts, find the roots, find Find Root. solution, right? Can I do yes. this? Yes. Okay, so first thing first, you have to factor out 15. Okay. So 15, the factors of 15 would be 5 and 3. So that would mean that it's at parenthesis x um, plus 5 and. Uh, Wait, no. is 5 no, plus no, 3 going to no. give you negative 8? It's negative. And negative three. Ah, so so it would be x minus five and x um, minus three. Okay. And then those equal zero. Okay, so I'm going to set it equal to zero. I'm going to make y zero. Okay. So then that means if a times b equals zero, then either a must equal zero, meaning x minus five equals zero, or b equals 0. Do you see how I'm writing two equations? Yes. x Five minus three. 3 equals 0. So I know one of them has to be 0. They don't have to both be 0, but one of them has to be, right? Yes. 
that's just the way. So add five, you get x equals five. Gideon's rule worked. Whatever this is, just take the opposite as your answer. All right, whatever this is, take the opposite. If I added three to both sides, x is equal to three, right? So there's my answer. So suddenly I know that with my parabola, I know I know that I've got one, two, three, four, five at three, and at five, I know my parabola crosses, right? Now I also know I haven't talked, I haven't explained this yet, but I also know that there is a this is a smiley face parabola because the number in front of the x squared, what is that number? It's positive. Uh, positive. It's positive. It's yeah. positive. Gary. Gary. It's happy. Gary, you're it's thinking Gary. positive thoughts. Gonna I'm so happy. Gary, happy, Gary. happy, Someone happy, 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 right? Jacket. So it's going to be a happy face, right? But now if he was thinking sad thoughts and then negative thoughts, well, I'm optimistic, so I'm it would be awful, right? So it's sad, it's happy. So I know it's a happy face, so it's going to probably look sort of like this. Well, Gary, I mean? I'm an optimistic, so I said smiley face. <laughs> yes. 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 Logic. Right. Math All right. logic. <laughs> that is such logic. Many so I'm not explaining, I'm not showing you yet how to graph these, but that it just it tells us a lot. We now know approximately where it is on the graph. Now you don't know why that's important, because I don't have a word problem yet for it. Yeah, but eventually I'll have face. a word problem, and it'll make some sense to you. You'll start to see it. Very so my smiley face looks like a worm with two eyes. Mine too. Very mine nice. Looks pretty okay. good. All right, let's try another one. Now sometimes I might give you something, guys. Sometimes I might give you something that's already factored, and I might still say find the zeros. Okay. So let's say I gave you something like this. 2x minus uh, 7 um, times 3x uh, plus 1 equals 0. And I ask you to find the zeros. Then you would just write it out like that. Then you do the or thing. So I'll either, yeah. if a yeah. you just do times the or. b equals 0, then either a equals zero. I don't have to factor. It's already factored, right? Yeah. No. So I just say either 2x minus 7 equals zero or 3x plus 1 equals zero. <laughs> I'm clever. So with this one, you're always clever. What do I do here? So Ben, help me. <laughs> okay, so you do plus 7. Right. Plus 7, plus 7. And then you would divide that by 2 and you would get x equals 7 Halves. Very good. That's it. That's your answer. Or, okay, Andrea, help me. For this one. Um, you subtract one. Subtract one. Then you put that over three, so you get um, x is equal to one, a negative one. Third. Yeah. X is equal to negative one third. Now, do you guys all know? I think I've explained this to you. That negative. 1 over 3 is the same as 1 over negative 3, which is the same as negative 1 over 3. Yeah. You guys know that? Yeah. All three of those fractions have oh, only one negative Barry, sign. What would we do if it wasn't y equals and it was x equals? Uh, you won't see that. You won't see that. Because in this particular case, what we're talking about with parabolas or something we can graph is you have to have, you can't have x's without y's if you're going to graph them. You know what I mean? You've got to have two variables. You can have a's and b's, you know what I mean? But you've got to have, I can't say x is equal to 2x minus 7 times 3x plus 1. I could, but then it would be, I'd have to, I'd have to try solving it and see see what I could do with it. But you'd have to use algebra. You just sort of play around with it. You know, do your you'd have to multiply things out first, bring the x over, subtract it from both sides, right? And get it s simplified and then see if you can factor again. Well, I mean, you could, but that's you're not going to get that kind of problem. Um, all right, so I think that's all you need to know. Now, you're not going to have one of these like these yet, right? 
the ones you're going to have are going to be like these, where I want you to factor them, set them equal to zero, and give me the answer. But you do understand the difference between what we've done in the past and what we're doing now. In the past, there was no equal sign, so all you could do is factor. With today's equation or it, um, problem, you are being asked to factor them just like before, but going one step further. It's pretty easy, right? It's a piece of cake, really, right? The hard part was the factoring. The easy part is, oh, well, it's either going to be 5 or negative. I mean, 5 or 3. You know, that's easy. But it's just going that extra step, right? So that's, um, what time is it? Um, it's 9.49. Uh, okay. Like a homework. All right, so I'm yeah. going to turn this yeah. off.